Hello, so recently I've gone through the grades of people like Einstein and Nikola Tesla and on those videos some of you asked that I show some of my own grades and I thought well today as a bit of a special video to celebrate passing 500k subscribers then I would do just that. So I'm going to show you through the transcript I have here of my time at the University of Canterbury which is where I did my undergraduate degree and it was a Bachelor of Science majoring in Physics and Maths. I'll put the university grading scale up on the screen so you can have a little look. It goes from an A+, which means you got a mark of between 90 and 100 for the course, all the way down to an E. And I think anything above a D would be considered a passing grade. There are then a couple of special grades such as P and F, which are usually for things that aren't worth credit or are considered differently to an actual course. So let's start with 2013, which was my first year of uni. And the year is broken up into two main semesters and to be considered a full-time student, you would take four courses in each semester. Each course is worth 15 points. So if you keep that up over three years, you would have the 360 points that you need to graduate. Now I'll highlight the courses that I took during my first semester, which is when I was 17. I got two A pluses, an A and an A minus. Now this was probably one of my best semesters at uni because I was fresh out of high school, I was motivated, I was pretty hardworking and I was fairly organized. So much so that I do remember actually reading and studying some of the lecture materials before showing up to the lecture, which is a good practice, but unfortunately not something that I was able to keep up for very long. I took courses in math, physics, astrophysics and computer science. Now of those, the computer science course was definitely the most difficult for me. And I think that's because I had never encountered computer science before. This class was my first introduction to any of the concepts of coding. So first semester was fine, but second semester would go on to probably be my worst semester of my degree. It was one where I felt stressed a lot of the time, I was disorganized, I would show up to lectures late. Um, I had this one class that I really hated which was Math 170 and I don't, maybe I hated it because I didn't really have any friends in that class or I don't know why. Um, but I remember when the exam time came around I just felt like I couldn't focus, I couldn't focus on studying. I showed up to the exam and asked someone as we were waiting outside the door to be let in to explain Bayes' theorem to me. You know that's how last minute I was kind of panicking about this, this whole semester. At the same time, I was taking part in this university business competition and trying to launch a startup. And I was also working on some other projects uh, to do with uh, video interviews and things for the physics department. A couple of notes is that this academic writing assessment wasn't a course, it was just a little test we had to do to prove we were proficient at writing. Uh, and this Astro 211, the two indicates that it was a second year course, whereas all of the others would be considered first year courses. So that's kind of reflecting their difficulty. So let's move on to my second year. Um, and you may notice here that I've taken 10 courses instead of the usual eight. And there's no real reason why I've done that. And in fact, I ended up getting a lot more points than I needed to graduate. Um, so you wouldn't do this as a strategic uh, option, I guess, but the extra courses that I added were ones that I really wanted to take. And so I felt prepared to do extra work in both semesters to be able to take them. I did all the standard courses in maths and physics, and then I added this science communication third year course, uh, which I guess kind of makes sense to what I do now. I was interested in science communication back then. And I also added on this um, first year computer science course, which was a follow up to the one I'd taken in first year. And I kid you not, I decided to take that course uh, just because I had a dream about it. I had a dream about one day before the deadline to sign up um, for courses that I had taken this course and that 
I don't know, there was just this feeling that it was the right thing to do. So I woke up and I enrolled in it, but I actually was really glad about that decision. Um, it was a course all about sort of algorithms and data structures. And in the um, internship that I did at the end of this second year, uh, it was in an observatory and we were processing images of galaxies. The skills that I learned in that class were pretty much the most useful thing I'd learned uh, all year in terms of you know, how to process these images using code. The grades this year were pretty good. I got quite a few A pluses and no Bs, which I was happy about. Of these courses, the hardest one uh, was probably analysis and groups, Math 240. Um, but the one that required the most work was probably Phys 285, Experimental Physics, which I managed to get an A plus in, but it took a lot of work because it was a lab course where every week we would do like a three hour experiment and then every week have to write up a long lab report um, and send that in. It would be about 10 or so pages with all the code and everything. And um, yeah, I guess a few of the weeks of this course, I did have to pull an all-nighter to get that lab report done. Um, but yeah, I managed to do well in it in the end. Probably my favorite course this year was um, Math 203 Linear Algebra, which I also got an A plus in. And I don't know, it was just a concept I enjoyed. I thought the lectures were nice. Everything sort of fit together and made sense in a way. And um, yeah, I don't know, it was an area of math that I felt like I was good at. During 2014, I did still have a lot of stuff going on outside class. Um, I was the vice president of the Physics Society that year and still working on, I guess, lots of little science communication projects. Um, but I think compared to the, the previous semester, things were a lot more calm. I was, in general, less stressed and a bit more organized. My third and final year, I again made the odd choice to take 10 courses instead of eight. And um, this time I did all of the usual courses in maths and physics. Uh, and then I added on this Psych 106 course, which I was able to take under this program the uni had called the Vice Chancellor's Award, where people were able to take a course outside of their usual program. Uh, for me, that would be outside of physics um, and take it without having to pay for it. And they would only be marked either pass or fail. So it wouldn't really affect their GPA and they would be able to have a uh, try of something a little bit new. So I took this psychology course and yeah, I kind of enjoyed it. My hardest course this semester was Math 302 and Partial Differential Equations, which I got another B in, which again, I wasn't happy about. But um, yeah, that course, I don't know, I just found it really hard. The midterm test of this course, I actually got 50% on. After getting that really bad midterm result, I was like, man, I'm gonna do terribly in this course. I should um, withdraw from it because I've got way more than enough points that I need to graduate. I don't even need to take it. Um, but I went to the admin of the university and they said I was one day too late to be able to withdraw from the course. So I just had to stay in it. And I guess I'm glad I did. There would have been you know, no real benefit to me pulling out of things, even if I'm gonna get a low grade, which might look bad on my transcript. Well, at the time I didn't think I'd be showing it to thousands of people on the internet. Um, but I guess it was better to just keep it and learn the things I did learn in that course than trying to run away from it. Um, that year I also did Dynamical Systems, which I really liked. Um, it's one of my favorite courses, but definitely the course I loved the most of my whole degree was this course Math 380, and it was Mathematics in Perspective. It was basically a history of mathematics class. It was in this course that I first read A Mathematician's Apology, um, and the first time I encountered Babylonian, ancient mathematics and ideas there. Um, I just really loved everything in this course. Uh, one of the lecturers even gave us a challenge to present a mathematical poem to the class. And at this time, I'd already been performing some mathematically themed poems at open mic nights around the city. And so that was like right up my alley uh, for, an, it's, it's for an assignment. That was exactly the things I love doing. And I was quite proud of myself for getting a few A pluses in subjects that I'd found were quite difficult, including the advanced experimental physics, the classical mechanics and symmetry principles, and the advanced electromag and materials course. 
And so that was more than enough to graduate with a Bachelor of Science, first major physics, second major mathematics. And I have at the end here some academic awards that I had while I was a student. I did also receive the award for a top physics student at the end of my third year. And one of the reasons I came to this university was that I got the Aurora Scholarship in Astronomy and that was something that you applied for coming out of school and it allowed you to um, go to the Mount John University Observatory and do like experience in observing and astronomy and I even got to take a uh, trip to some overseas astronomy sites as part of that so that was really great um, and yeah I'd done quite a lot of astronomy stuff including at my local astronomy club as a high school student so that definitely helped uh, in applying for that. After this degree I moved to Australia and went to the ANU where I did my honours year and started my PhD and I guess I've never shown these grades to anyone except having to apply for honours and PhD uh, and since then you know they haven't really been needed at all and um, I guess I probably didn't need to worry so much about what they looked like in that case because no one really is going to be looking back to these grades uh, as you you know, finish higher degrees and, and go into the workforce. Although I'm in the unique position of showing them now to thousands of people, which probably would have been uh, my worst fear when I got some of those grades I didn't like. Um, but yeah, I guess it's important though to mention that I spent a lot of time stressing about how these grades would look and how they would be perceived and maybe linking my self-worth to these grades, which is not a good thing to do. I don't regret getting good grades though, because it meant that I was trying really hard at these courses and I was actually learning a lot of things. While I was a student, I didn't really go out, I didn't drink, I didn't party, um, and you might consider that to be a sacrifice in striving for good grades. To me, I didn't really see it as a sacrifice because those weren't things that I was interested in or would enjoy anyway, but there were certain sacrifices for sure that I had to make um, just to my own life to try this hard and to you know, want to, want to get these grades that looked good. I also wouldn't consider my efforts here to be wasted now that I'm not doing my PhD and now that I'm making YouTube videos. Maybe one day I will return to the PhD, but it's, you know, not something that I really feel is right for me at the moment. And I don't consider these grades having gone to waste um, because I can always, you know, take that option to go back. Or I can just take this knowledge and experience that I got in the process and use it to do other things. In the meantime, you can expect to see me covering the grades and other documents from people who are much more impressive than myself. And a big thank you for helping me to reach 500k subscribers. It's an awesome milestone and you know, definitely every one of you who has subscribed to the channel has helped me get there. A big thank you as always to my Patreon supporters and a special shout out to today's Patreon cat of the day who is looking awfully reptilian, Thor. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.